Hi, I'm Natty, and thank you for watching Music News. Hmm. Natty, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm very good. Good stuff. Hmm. Your second album, Release the Fear, came out earlier this year. A long time coming since uh, your debut, Man Like I. Yep. What have you been up to? Wow, I've been up to a lot of things, you know. Um, to fit them all into this short time would be hard, but you know, we built a studio, recorded it in the studio, yeah. then took the studio down and moved it. That's one side of things. We've got a charity where, um, well, we don't have a charity, but we've partnered up with a, an elder of mine who started a charity and now we've taken it on to new heights. So we have like an orphanage and four schools in Africa that we look after. Um, and the clothing mattress program in Southern Africa that we do. Um, workshops like homeless people, um, young offenders, different types of things that are like songwriting workshops, stuff like that. Um, producing, um, I used to be a producer before I was a singer, yeah. Um, so bits and pieces of that, and then just making this album the best it can be. So, when, when did you write it across the whole time in between? Yeah, yes. bits and pieces. I mean, like Street Lights. Is a song that I wrote like in 2000, 2011, you know, and then that was probably the first one for this record, and then different bits, you, and then there's a song that I wrote just in the last year. So, yeah, it's just <laughs> been different. The songs have been scattered around the time. I've written loads of songs, and I've even got another album ready to go. Oh, you yeah. have? Um, I was going to ask you that later. <laughs> we have to wait another seven years for the next one. No, no, no. Do you know how many times I've been asked that question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but no, I wrote a lot of songs and for me, I just wanted to capture the right feeling and the right set of even moral and values and feelings of the vibe of Release the Fear. So I didn't just write a load of songs and then just put them all on. It was like I wrote a load of songs and then just write which one is the right vibe for this. So what, you had a sort of theme in your head? Yeah, so it's kind of like a concept album. Yeah, and the, the concept being Release the Fear. And at the start of Release the Fear is the, f is the first song on the album, which is I'm Alive, which is basically a song about giving thanks for life. And so for me, on my journey of releasing fear, when I first started it, it was recognising my space within this whole situation and giving thanks for that. And then it's like, oh, OK. And it was like the first steps to like leading a slightly more conscious lifestyle. Excellent. I mean, you tell you, Street Lights, second single off the yep. new album, out yep. tomorrow. Yep. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Street Lights is a song that... Um, it's one of the ones where it's a bit wrong still. It kind of does what it says <laughs> on the tin, you know? It's like, let's go turn off all the street lights, see who's going to want to walk. Let's go pull down all the traffic signs, see who still gets in the cars. We ripped up all the cable lines. How many people would still talk? We could go and sit on the... We could go and take the and sit underneath the stars. I don't want to say the whole thing, but anyway, my point being is, is that if we could just separate ourselves from the technology that sometimes binds us into the lifestyles that we think we should be leading, or for example, I might be sitting at a red light in um, and it's 3 a.m. and the red light's broken and I'm just going to sit there at the red light waiting for a green light and no one's on the road. But I'm just gonna sit there. You know that that kind of yeah, mentality, yeah, yeah. which a lot of us, if we were in that, would probably sit there for a while. Hang on a minute, can I think for myself? Or the telephones? Would I still get up and go? I probably would get up and go and see my friend. And you know that feeling when it's like I've got to see my friend, and he and Jimmy's thinking at the same time. I've got da da da. We probably get more in contact with that again. So it's just about putting that aside for a minute and just getting in tune with what's real. Right stuff. It released on your own uh, label as well, Vibes and Pressure. Yeah. How's that side of the, the business and the, and the club nights and all that? Yeah, it's going good. It's going good. We've got a club night, um, 7th of J July, next week. Jazz Cafe, come down. Oh, yeah, yeah, make yeah. It. Um, playing acoustic that night. Are we playing acoustic alongside a Cora player? You know the Cora? Yeah. The long African instrument. Oh, that They play yes, like that, yes, string yes. instrument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like a friend of mine who's like a master Cora player, you know, like 78th generation handed down kind of thing, like from way, way, way back when. So 
I'll be playing alongside him um, for the first time. And then we've got a couple guys over as well. And then we've got the label, yeah, which is it's hard work. But, you know, getting into it, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. You know, with a little bit of help from people like yourselves and things and all the people are like, yeah, I like what you're doing as opposed to, oh, well, you're not Sony and you're not paying me two grand, so I yeah, can't. Yeah. You know, for people who like music, they're supporting what we're doing because we've got a good couple artists on here and, yeah. Who's, the, who's your main, main, uh, who's the money on? Um, <laughs> right now, me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right now, me, probably, but um, I've got another, we've got another couple. Basically, Vibes and Pressure is like a co conglomerate of friends, yeah, and it was kind of on me to set it up because I've worked in this recording studio for like four or five years recording some of the best artists and prestigious, prestigious artists and different types of sessions. So I know all about that side of it. I've been signed to a major label, so I know about that side of it. And I know about different, so it's kind of on my head yeah, yeah. To, to really kind of push the thing forward with a lot of artist friends just kind of, um, you know, we all just pitch in together. But like I say, it's a little bit on my head. <laughs> No, but well, I'm sure it's gonna be it's gonna go well. I mean, the album's got a real relaxed feel. What was uh, yeah? What was the aim in your head, vibe wise, for for the album? Um, just for it to be natural and not to have no gimmicks. So the whole thing thing about the album was to just essentially be an album that captured the feeling of releasing the fear. So it'd be like the soundtrack to people going. For going into themselves. Hence why it's not like boom, 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 because yeah, yeah. that's not really designed for more <laughs> going into yourself. So it's, it is, I suppose, probably more geared at um, more the home than the club, yeah? Or, and more the car than the... Yeah, no, no, the, you oh, know, I love it. That kind of vibration. Um, but I was just more, I, we had no boundaries. I wasn't trying to make a reggae album. I wasn't trying to make an African album. I wasn't trying to make a pop album or a soul album or a blues album, but I was definitely trying to just take pieces of all of my inspirations and just try and make whatever was right and whatever felt natural. And yeah, it felt natural after doing it and even putting it together at the end. Even the song list, we took some songs off, put some another one on. Like Motherland was a very, very late oh, arrival really? on the album and we took another song off to make space for that because it just had to come on, just because yeah, so that was the last song I wrote. Um, and it just, as long as it felt natural, that was the most important thing. And yeah, I no, think, I think you achieved that. Great. Cool. And uh, George the Poet, he guests on the uh, title track, Release the Fear. How, yeah. how did that come about? And um, uh, He's a friend. Yeah. Yeah, he's a friend. So it's a thing where one day we're talking about music because he'd come over sometimes because we've been friends for a little while now. Well, I met him actually at one of my shows way, way, way before any of his stuff. He was still studying. He was at Oxford and he was studying and he'd come to see me. And he thought, oh, I'm a big fan. Da, da, da. We just got talking one time. Two years later, I'm at a show and he just supported me, but I got there late so I didn't see him. And he's like, oh, da, da, I'd love to for you to hear my poetry. Anyway, we became friends. He'd come over sometimes. I played him the album that I was doing. He was like, and he was just like, oh. and he loved the 10 minute epic of Release the Fear and he was just like oh I love that song and he didn't even know I was, I was thinking about a feature and I just texted him one day yo do you want to jump on that song <laughs> he's like I'm there tomorrow cool boom so yeah, yeah. great and you, you just played Glastonbury Muddy yeah. Monk uh, thankfully we arrived on at the dry sunny time ah. so yeah I don't really do rain or let me say rain doesn't do me. Every time we arrive at a festival, there's raining. There ain't seems to stop for us. Yeah? It's a mad one. It's happened actually a couple times. I remember Ben Howard was on stage one time and he was like, yo, Natty, can you come back? The rain, <laughs> the rain's come back again. <laughs> I think we was in Cornwall and they cancelled the whole festival because it was like serious hurricane weather, apart from the last three acts. So I think it was Ella Air then me, then Ben Howard. And like she went on, it was still raining. Da, 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 da. We went on, sunlight, like, just straight <laughs> calm. And I was like, where the hell does the sun come from? We come off stage, Ben Howard's going, on, rain comes back again. And Ben's like, yo, Natty, what have you done to the sun? <laughs> and literally it's happened about three, four times. I can't explain it. 
I bet you probably get a few more bookings now. <laughs> Have you been touring the US as well with Ziggy Marley? Is that yeah. a good experience? That was yeah, that was that was a beautiful experience. Ziggy's cool. All the band were just cool. Like just made you feel comfortable. Um the crowds were because we were supporting, you don't know how it is sometimes when you're supporting, but the crowds were amazing. And like, I took enough CDs out there for what I thought would have been all we done seventeen shows for what would have been enough for 17 shows and we sold out of CDs in like four shows. Jeez. Just because the people were just so like, and they listened, so I'm, like, I'm singing, let's go turn off all the street lights and see, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> let's go, woo! All of this, I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so yeah, it was wicked. Magic. And uh, do you feel sort of mentally stronger this time round for this album as opposed to when you recorded the first one? Yeah, 100%. That sounded like a question that you kind of knew the answer, kind of almost. Can well, you feel the answer almost within that? Well, you'd, th you'd say yes, no, because I think because of your travels and your charity, it, yeah. it feels like you understand yourself a little bit more and you know, a bit more sure of yourself. 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, travelling and... Remember I wrote the first album and I hadn't really left the country. You know what I mean? And it was like, I was talking about the album was called Man Like I, so it was more from... Even the title alone is almost, it's not self-obsessive, but it's, it's like, you're just speaking about what you know. Whereas when, you know, thankfully this music has taken me around the world and I've got to meet lots of beautiful souls and travelled and spent time in different corners of the world and, and not been addicted to the, to the stuff that comes with, the, the trappings that comes with it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, when my record label tells me, oh, we're going to can this and we want you to do that. And when you write it, I was like, all right, cool, I'll see you later. I'm going to Africa for a year or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's that. <laughs> and I'm only in that situation because of like what you say, which is that becoming mentally stronger through the path that I've been on. So yeah, 100%. Yeah. Ah, that's good to hear. And um, yeah, with your sound, such a melting pot of cultural influences, what was your take on the, the Brexit vote the other day then? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, that was on the Friday, that was Friday, right? Was Friday the vote came through, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was Glastonbury. That oh, was, yeah, it yeah. was the same day yeah. where I performed at Glastonbury, and so like, literally everyone's walking around like, oh no, <laughs> da, 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 da. So I get on stage and I'm just like, how am I going to cheer up these people? And this is kind of answering your question though, but it was a thing, because it came from the heart and I meant it, which is that, no politician is ever going to justify my happiness or my sadness. It just can't happen. And so, with whatever's happening and going on today, the world is so much bigger than what we think it is. And whatever we think can happen in a year's time or two years' time, we've got no clue. For now, it might feel like something, but really and truly, here or there, it starts on the inside and yeah, I think I just think it will be all right. I just think it will be all right, you know. I really do, and I think that even traveling to Europe, if they're really gonna make it hard, I don't think they're gonna make it hard. And like, okay, the pound goes down a bit. So what? It's like who cares? It's like anyone. When you think about the the grand history of if history, the amount that England has built up on the back of other countries and other nations. It's like so what, man? It's Great Britain is only great because of all the bad stuff it's done to the commonwealth or um, the poor wealth, <laughs> the common poor let me say. <laughs> so like within the grand scheme of things it's just part of the world and I'm cool with it. Yeah I'm, I'm not upset you know. <laughs> but you're, you're from a mixed background, your yep. mum's from southern uh, Africa, your dad's English with Italian descent. Yep. So very importantly now, England are out of the Euros. Are you supporting Italy? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think I will. I hey. think I will. Yeah, yeah, I am. But you know, um, I shouldn't say this, but I, I got a little bit of a soft spot for Wales. Yeah, yeah that, I, I do. That's just, allowed. Just because, you know, I, I, don't, I think it's because of the music, man. There's a thing with like Welsh choirs where it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. it just touches you. I don't know, man. There's, there's someone that's singing out there is amazing and that. And they play with such. But yeah, I, I, like, I like Italian. I like the Italian way of playing football when they're pl just because I like the team. You yeah, know, yeah, I like, yeah. I like, I like strong as a team. Yeah, he's yeah. strong as a team. And no matter what, whether it's with what's it, with Perlo or without Perlo, it's yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, no. Go on, Italy. Hey, 
Who, who are you listening to these days then? Ah, uh, who am I listening to? A lot of African music, to be honest. Um, like I was in Rich Mix the other day. Oh yeah. Um, Jabril Sissoko, he was playing there. Oh. Um, that's how I got in touch with Jali, me and him, because we've been friends for a while. Um, then some older African stuff, Umu Sangari, like some Mali and stuff, a lot of Mali yeah, music yeah. and that. So I've just been, I've been off of the English language for a little bit, you know, just sounds. And then you find out what they're saying and you can, then you remember, was I getting that feeling from when I heard some singing in a language that I didn't know when you read the lyrics? Like Umu Sangari is very famous for like women's rights in her country because it's a Muslim country and that. Yeah, and yeah. then so it's a lot about the suffering of women and going through certain things and trying to up. And you can hear it in the music without understanding the language. You can hear a little bit of the suffering and the and yeah, she's amazing. So yeah, I've just come off of the pop charts for a little bit. Yeah, just, no, just it's no bit. bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I mean, what, do you have a personal philosophy on life then? Um, no, but there's loads, man. I don't have one. I don't have one, otherwise, yeah, otherwise I'd be sitting here with hours of video silence trying to think of that <laughs> one. <laughs> so I won't say one, but it's just, you know, it's just best foot forward. It's just about remaining, always trying to see the good in, in every situation and going for the, let me say not the good, but the truth. Yeah, because I'm all about the truth. And even if it hurts, give me the truth, you know, so. Yeah, best foot forward with the truth in your pocket. There we That's go. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, well, thanks a lot for your time. It's been a pleasure. Cool. For uh, for someone just getting into Natty, which three songs are yours? Would you say check these out? These okay. totally sum me up. Okay, um, I've got to choose one from Man Like I, I reckon, because naturally you'd say three from the newest album because <laughs> you want to be. But one from my first album would probably be Coloured Souls, um, and then. So, Coloured Souls, I'm Alive, and, oh, jeez. Oh, that's a tricky one, man. <laughs> that's the hardest question of the day. I'm Alive, Coloured Souls, and let me say Release the Fear. Let me say Excellent. Release the Fear, yeah. Thanks a lot. Anything else to say to music news watchers? Um, best foot forward with the truth in your pocket. <laughs> music news followers. Big up, respect, Natty. Thanks a lot. Cool man. Magic, thank you.